In the past few days, there's been lots of talk about the one stack to rule them all in relation to Tesla's full self-driving 10 beta software release, which just came out. And while this sounds very J.R.R. Tolkien, and I expect the thumbnail of this episode will involve Frodo and the ring, <laughs> there are a lot of you out there who've asked me what the heck a single stack actually is and why it matters. Let's take a look and find out. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So yeah, first of all, I think there's a little bit of conflation of two different concepts that are going on here. There is a kind of single technology stack and there's also a single software stack. So I wanna talk about the second of these, but first I'm gonna tell you what the first one is just so you have some basic knowledge so you can separate the two in your mind. So of course, a single technology stack can be many things for many different products, but in the case of cars, a technology stack is something like the cars themselves, obviously, the sensors on the cars, the controller technology, in other words, the steering wheel, the acceleration, the brakes, etc., the data collection software, the data storage, the data labeling, the full self-driving training hardware, full self-driving training software, and of course, you can see many videos on these <laughs> linked up above. And then, of course, full self-driving over-the-air updates, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, I am still waiting for my beta 10. I really hope that one of these days I actually get access to it. So I'm actually hoping for the wide release in two weeks. It's supposed to happen, I think, on, on uh, September 24th. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed since I don't appear to be one of the people in the early beta rollout thing that the uh, wider release will come to all of us very, very soon. Anyway, but the over-the-air updates, I guess, would be part of that technology stack as well. So anyway, as you might imagine, Tesla owns almost all of this whole stack of technologies since they're so vertically integrated. And this is what Andre talks about in this quote from VentureBeat. Quote, Tesla's big advantage is its vertical integration. Tesla owns the entire self-driving car stack. It manufactures the car and the hardware for self-driving capabilities. It is in a unique position to collect a wide variety of telemetry and video data from the millions of cars it has sold. It also creates and trains its neural networks on its proprietary data sets, its special in-house compute clusters, and validates and fine-tunes the networks through shadow testing on its cars. And of course, it has a very talented team of machine learning engineers, researchers, and hardware designers to put all the pieces together. And now an actual quote from Andre within this quote, quote, you get to co-design and engineer all the layers of that stack, end quote, Carpathy said, quote, there's no third party that is holding you back. You're fully in charge of your own destiny, which I think is incredible, end quote, end quote. So that would be what's termed a technology stack, and obviously Tesla is in the driver's seat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tesla is it, yeah, Tesla's in the driver's seat in terms of technology stacks. There's really no other company in terms of automotive manufacturers or people working on full self-driving that are in charge of that much of their engineering stack. But the stack that Elon Musk and others have been referring to lately is not this stack. It's the full self-driving software stack by itself. So let's take a moment to talk about the current non-beta software that, you know, those of us who are driving full self-driving, except for the beta testers, are currently driving. Currently, there is the Highway Enhanced Navigate on autopilot, and this is what I know, there may be more things here too, but anyway, the Highway Enoa, the City Driving you know, stack, the summon stack, the parking stack, and each of these has multiple pieces within it too. This is obviously problematic. All these things don't work particularly well together. And one thing like the highway navigate on autopilot actually works fairly well, while things like the parking and stuff work terribly. So the goal is to get one consistent program that runs everything and can do all of these cases. In this case, of course, this is a commingled set of neural networks to run everything from highway to parking. And of course, if you're interested in seeing more about this, I've talked at least length about this in my AI Day playlist, so definitely check that out. So anyway, the goal is one complete full self-driving software stack. Now that doesn't mean one program, there's lots and lots of programs, it's called a HydroNet after all, but it means one sort of uh, generalized view about how this all works. This is not the case in version 10.0, which was released a couple of days ago. For one thing, I know Elon Musk has tweeted that the highway version of the driving is using the old stack. So Musk says in 10.1, all of this stuff will be integrated. And when it is integrated, it will be using what Andre Carpathy and team have termed the HydroNet because it has 
sort of an input layer, which is the vision layer. It has trunks that amortize a bunch of different functionality, and then it has heads that actually do independent tasks. And again, of course, if you wanna see more about that, you can just check out the videos that I've already talked about up there. This is also the result of what Andre Carpathy said a couple of years ago was software 2.0 eating software 1.0, as you can see in this image that he had at a conference presentation. So the sort of legacy or non-beta version of full self-driving has a bunch of hard-coded C++ in it. It has rules for specific things to do in specific instances, specific hard-coded planning routines. Like, you know, if you get one mile within the exit you're supposed to take on the highway, then you need to get into the far right-hand lane in a right-hand driving country, of course. And this legacy stack also has neural network models that have grown up over time and that have been inserted into it. In other words, it's all a big jumble without a good organizing principle. So again, some things work fine, like highway lane keeping, most highway lane changes, etc. Some things work okay, like city lane keeping, and some things are pretty bad, like summon and parking. And some things simply don't exist in this legacy stack, like navigating on city streets with turns or lane changes on city streets. So if you think about this metaphorically for a second, you don't get to be a good driver if you can only do one thing, right? It'd be like having one person in the car who only ever drives on the highway, another person who drives on the streets, another one who does the parking, and then missing somebody who can actually make turns on the city. So you got problems in terms of driving if you're gonna do that, plus the fact that I don't know how you switch people off like that. But anyway, you get the basic idea here. So no wonder with this software, the car asks for help so often. So what 10.x is supposed to bring is something more like one person driving who has been trained on everything and can drive anywhere, anytime. Hopefully this will be version 10.1 or 10.2, but likely it'll be later before all of these things become part of it. So as people who have coded and worked on computers before understand, doing something this big is really, really complex. And I've never worked on anything like this big of a project. But anyway, even on smaller projects, you know, if you try to do this all in one sort of basic idea and one sort of stack, it gets really nasty to debug. It becomes problematic because if you fix one thing, you break something else. Shout out to the coders out there. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, if you can get it to work, right? If when you can get this to work, it's going to work pretty much everywhere it's been trained on. And of course, since this is based on neural nets, they can really learn anything if given enough data and clever architecture. And not only will it work everywhere, it'll be consistent between different environments. And right now it's not. So in other words, city driving, high highway driving, dirt roads, rain, snow, parking lots, etc. It'll be much more consistent. And I just watched Rob Maurer's video, I'll put a link in the description, his first use of the beta driving software. And he was like, holy crap, this thing is so much more confident and aggressive than the old one was. Can be very nervous. We got pedestrians everywhere. Yeah, this was certainly one way to start. So, you know, I personally, since I've been using the older version, since I, you know, bought our Model Y back in December of last year, am used to the kind of timid behavior of the full self-driving right now. So I have a feeling when I do eventually get this version 10.x or something, it's going to take a while to get used to it again because it's going to probably be a lot more aggressive and more kind of like a human being driving. And again, if you know, if a person's driving and you're sitting in the passenger seat, you're like, yeah, okay, that's a, a person driving and they're aggressive. But if you're watching a computer do it, I'm sure it's going to take some getting used to. It took a while to get used to the old version of full self-driving, which is much, much more timid and I'm sure it's gonna take a significant amount of time to get used to this new version. But anyway, again, once this stuff all gets working, it's gonna work consistently across different spectra of driving, and it's going to be able to be trained in a consistent manner in the future, and that's also really important. And of course, you won't have to keep bolting extra junk onto it as the neural networks are flexible enough to learn everything a human driver can. So that means no more hard coding, no more exception programming, no more bolting things on for particular uses. In other words, it's one software stack to rule them all. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting, and I hope that does help to explain what one stack actually means. If it did, definitely like the video so other people can find it and consider subscribing for more of this. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate your support. I appreciate the conversations we have. I think this one actually came out to some extent of Discord conversations that I had with Patreon patrons. So thank you for the idea for this episode. I also wanted to take a moment today to do a new Patreon shout out. So here are some new patrons that just joined us. Eric Elfner, Jason Claremont, John Fitzgerald, Greg Gibbons, and Jeremy Allred. 
Welcome to all of you, and of course, if you want to join the club, definitely check out the link in the description. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And don't forget about our merch store, which now has physics is the law, everything else is a recommendation, which is a quote by Elon Musk, as well as other t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, etc., etc. Check it out in the description. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking a link and going shopping for a Tesla, a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye. <laughs>